Hello everyone, my name is Kirill and you are on the Auto Advisor channel. Today we'll talk about the sensors of a gasoline engine. In order for a gasoline engine to work, it's necessary to take a certain amount of fuel, a certain amount of oxygen, feed all this into the cylinders at the right time and set it on fire, also at the right time. Inside the cylinder, the air-fuel mixture burns, the gases expand, push air pistons and the engine rotates. It's important to note, very stringent requirements for efficiency and environmental friendliness have been imposed on the engine, which means that the preparation of the fuel-air mixture must be accurate in order to observe these chemical reactions. It's also necessary to supply fuel and air at the right time. In this case, the correct chemical reactions occur and at the output we have exhaust gases that comply with environmental standards and with such an accurate approach the engine is also cost effective. To ensure the accurate preparation of the fuel-air mixture, the electronic control unit is installed on it which has certain algorithms. The electronic control unit is connected to the necessary sensors and, based on the information from them, already controls the life of the engine. And so, we've figured out with you how the engine works and what processes take place there. And now we need to understand how we manage a gasoline engine. And so, as you know, there is an accelerator paddle to control the engine. When the driver presses the accelerator pedal, he controls the air supply, that is, the more we press the accelerator pedal, the more air enters the gasoline engine. Based on this, more fuel is supplied and all other processes are already spinning. Now we go directly to the sensors of the gasoline engine. The first group of sensors is responsible for the fuel supply. The fuel supply is calculated based on the air entering the engine, so most of the sensors in this group work with air. And so, first sensor is called the mass airflow sensor. It's installed in the intake manifold and determines how much air enters the engine. By the way, we have a video on the channel about this sensor, the link will be in the description. But unfortunately, the information from this sensor is not enough to determine how much air actually enters the engine. So a second sensor is installed to help this sensor, which measures the temperature of the incoming air. Since air is a gas and its density is very dependent on temperature. So, when we know the temperature, we can more accurately calculate the mass of air supplied to the engine. To help these previous two sensors, sometimes a third sensor is also installed. It's called Manifold Absolute Pressure or MAP sensor. It's also installed in the intake manifold and measures the pressure of this air. All three of these sensors help the control module to more accurately determine how much air is entering the engine. So, we have a maximum of three sensors in order to determine how much air enters the engine. Do you think this is enough? No. There is a fourth sensor. This sensor is called the throttle position sensor. A throttle valve is a valve that opens and closes. By the way, we also have a detailed video on this topic. So there is such a sensor that determines the opening angle of this throttle. And when we press the accelerator pedal of a gasoline engine, we control exactly the opening angle of this throttle. And so we already have four sensors, and it seems to be enough. But no, there are still fifth and even sixth sensors. Fifth sensor is the lambda sensor or oxygen sensor. Usually two of them are installed in modern cars. This sensor already measures the quantity of oxygen present in exhaust gases, that is, it's installed in the exhaust manifold. One oxygen sensor is installed before the catalyst and it determines the residual oxygen in the exhaust gases and according to this information, the control unit analyzes whether the air fuel mixture was prepared correctly. And the second lambda sensor is installed after the catalyst and it analyzes if our catalyst is working correctly. 
The catalyst or catalytic converter is an exhaust emission control device that converts toxic gases and pollutants in exhaust gas into less toxic pollutants by catalyzing a redox reaction. So what do we have? First is a mass airflow sensor, the second is a temperature sensor, third is a manifold absolute pressure sensor, fourth is a throttle position sensor, and the fifth and sixth are lambda sensors. All the sensors ensure the correct preparation of the fuel air mixture. And now we are moving on to the second group of engine sensors. These sensors are responsible for the correct moment of fuel injection and the correct moment of its ignition. The first sensor in this group is the crankshaft position sensor. This sensor is installed near the crankshaft and monitors the speed of its rotation as well as the position of the shaft in space. Based on the readings of this sensor, the electronic control unit calculates the injection moment and the ignition timing. The second sensor in this group is the camshaft position sensor. This sensor, by analogy with the first one, reads what position the camshaft is currently in, and based on this information, the control unit decides on when to inject fuel and when to ignite it for each cylinder. So these are two main sensors in this group. But there is also one more sensor, number three the NOC sensor. It's installed directly in the engine body and identifies the high-frequency engine vibrations of knocking and transmits a signal to the ECU. Knocking is such a bad process that it can destroy an engine. Detonation occurs at high loads or if you fill in low-quality fuel. Therefore, if the sensor hears detonation, then it gives a signal and the control unit changes the moment of fuel supply and the moment of its ignition. In the second group we have only three sensors. This is a crankshaft position sensor, a camshaft position sensor and a NOC sensor. All these sensors are responsible for the moment of fuel injection into the engine cylinders and ignition of the fuel-air mixture. By the way, the crankshaft position sensor is also commonly used as the primary source for the measurement of the engine speed in revolutions per minute, which is displayed on a dashboard. So these are two groups of the most basic gasoline engine sensors. But nevertheless, there are additional sensors. We will unite them in a separate group and call them additional. First sensor in this group is called the coolant temperature sensor. By the way, its readings are also displayed on the dashboard. Board. The temperature gauge will tell you if your engine's coolant is cold, normal or overheating. How useful is this sensor? Well, it's clear that if the engine overheats, we see it on the dashboard, then it's necessary to stop. At the second moment, depending on the signal from this sensor, on some cars, the cooling system fan turns on, so that more air cools the engine radiator and the engine does not overheat. The second sensor is an oil pressure sensor. It also has an indicator on a dashboard, but it usually lights up when the pressure is too low, which indicates that there is not enough oil in the engine and you need to add it. The sensor does not directly affect the performance of the engine, it's made more for the driver. The third additional sensor is the engine speed sensor. It reads how fast the wheels are spinning. The engine control model can use this information to modify various engine functions such as air-fuel ratio, ignition timing and performing diagnostic tests. Also, depending on the car, there may be other sensors in this group. For example, there is a rough road sensor. It's installed in the area of the shock absorber and analyzes which road we are driving on. There is also an air conditioner sensor. If we turn on the air conditioner, we connect an additional power consumer and it's necessary to somehow regulate the fuel supply in this case. So we have talked about all the main sensors of a gasoline engine. The first group was responsible for the fuel supply. The second group was responsible for the moment of fuel supply and for the ignition of the fuel-air mixture. 
and the third group was additional sensor. So these are all the sensors of the engine and I hope you understand now how all of them work. And now an important point. All these sensors can be bought on the outerostrov.by website. If you need any of them, check it out. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, so be sure to like and subscribe to our channel and all the best to you. See you soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm.